running some errands. A few things on my mind. Uh, one of them being, and it has been for the past few months, is uh, YouTube and where we're going as the knife community progresses and we grow larger and larger and larger and uh, bring on more and more skilled people um, and, you know, just the, the great community that we have here. Uh, participating in that giveaway and some other things. I just think that that we're making it happen over here and I, I love to see it grow like this. So, <sighs> man, I love the forums. I really do. I, I was there for years and years and years. Um, I still lurk, but I don't post much anymore. It's just so much of the same stuff over and over and over again. You go to Blade Forums and it's all about, oh, Strider sucks and this and that. And then you go over to uh, USN. They're not as bad at all. I mean, it seems like that's the, the premium forum where any serious collector is. But I, I'm starting to see, or, or from what I perceive to see, is the two uh, coming together, if you will. Uh, a lot of the people who are on the forums are also on YouTube, and it's all kind of mishmashing together. And you're starting to see a lot more higher-end collections on YouTube. That's awesome. You're starting to see a lot more skilled modifiers. Are we going to stop calling them pimping, or is it still always going to be pimping? I don't know. I don't really care. I mean, a knife pimper. I don't particularly think it sounds awesome, but whatever. I guess that's what it is. Knife pimping. Um, anyways, with the great people out there, it's just, um, I think we're growing. I think we're going in the right direction. I like to see it. One thing I want to do is I want to start doing more and more shout outs. Um, haven't done a shout out in a long time. I don't really have anybody on my mind right now uh, just because I need to. There's so many. I've found so many channels that I never even knew about. It's just, uh, crazy. It's great. It's wonderful. I would encourage anybody to just make a video. You do feel a little bit silly at first. You really do. And I still do to this day at times. Uh, but you do get used to it. And it is fun to do. It's actually fun to make a video. So I would encourage that. I think there's still a lot of unfound talent out there for just being a knife channel, I guess, or some people say personality. I don't know. Whatever. But I like to see the way it's going. We're growing. I know my subscriber base is growing and everybody else it seems to be growing, which tells me that more people are signing up to YouTube and that's that's a cool thing. <clears throat> There's a few things and I'm probably may catch a little flack for this, but I do think that when you go on the forums and you know some people don't take YouTube seriously and I think there's a few things that we could do a little bit better us uh, video makers and one thing is when, when you've got been gone say you make videos every day or every two days and you disappear for a week um, just my opinion when you come back you don't need to apologize especially if you have your label uh, if your video labeled as like a knife review because nobody really like think about it the first time somebody comes over to YouTube they come off Blade Forms or USN and they want to go look at an SNG knife review so they go to YouTube type in SNG uh, watch the first few popular ones but usually those really popular videos with like 20 some thousand views are kind of old you know at least by a few years so they find a one with maybe a few views on it and uh, maybe that's a newer video or whatever and the first thing they have is the knife the SNG folded up sitting on a table and then the next 30 seconds or 40 seconds or a minute and a half is somebody I'm sorry I hadn't made a video in a while this and that by then they're almost bored they're they have already clicked off or are about to click off but anyways their experience on YouTube has not been very good so far okay or, or at least that's my opinion then they may talk about the knife the knife specs with it still closed 
and sitting on the table. Nothing has moved on the table at all. They come to YouTube to see the knife turn around, to see the knife in the hand, maybe to see the knife up against another knife. <coughs> if they wanted to see all the specs and all the steel compositions, you can do that in just a few seconds on Google. It's fine to mention that in passing, you know. This is all my opinion. I'm just trying to, to help, you know. Um, at, at least take the knife off the table and flip it open a few times. Maybe show lockup as you're talking about the specs, how long the blade is, this and that. Me personally, I don't care about specs. And I've never had one complaint in the, whatever, 200 and some videos I've made or maybe whatever, all the knife reviews I've ever made. Nobody's ever said, hey man, you didn't give me the steel composition and the blade length. I try to slip it in, but really, I don't think it's necessary. That's just me. Some people really like to do all that. I think it just bores people. Another thing, when you open up the knife, yeah, this is a flat, we're still reviewing the SNG, okay? Theoretically. And you open up the knife. Oh, it's a flat ground blade. Yes, it has a finger trail here. Uh, they can see all that in the picture. They come to YouTube again to something different. Let's give them something different. What is your experience? And again, that would be another thing. I don't think you can really give a good knife review without actually using the knife. Now, I'm not saying you have to use the knife for a year or a month even. If you've been around knives a while, then you know what you like and what you don't like, and you can give a pretty fair assessment of how that knife is going to perform long term. Uh, things like uh, blade play and up and down play, and you know maybe little little nuances like uh, hot spots and stuff like that may not be apparent with you know that little use. But overall, I think you can give a good assessment of how the knife is going to perform. So, I think it's funny to like watch people unbox a knife. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Just for me, I would never unbox a knife and call it a review. Which I think we were kind of over that. Which in the past, though, that was a pretty big thing on YouTube. Unbox a knife and a review. Or, you see somebody post the unboxing of the knife. They're super pumped to get it. And then a day or two later, you see the review go up. Now, to me, and I mean to most people, when you purchase something, you purchased it because you liked it, which is why you don't see many negative reviews. Uh, because if the person purchased it, most of us are not sponsored. We're not getting free knives sent to us. This is all our own money, all our own time, and stuff like that. You know, So you don't really see many negative reviews because if we've purchased the knife, we must be interested in the knife. You know, we we're probably not going to post something bad unless something goes bad, you know. And even then, some people will go and deny all the stuff. But anyways, that new Sabenza or SNG cannot have any lock rock or wiggle. But anyways, I don't know where I was going. I just put a few days worth of use, a few weeks worth of use. And, and what people come to YouTube for... In my experience, and what I've seen, in all my opinion, I just have to give all the caveats. They come to hear your personal experience. How does a knife work for you? Do you like the way the blade is shaped? Do you like the way it slices? All S30V is not created equal. Heat treat is everything. How does that particular one stack up to the other ones that you've had? Which that's the stuff I try to do in my reviews. Which I'm not saying I'm perfect, not by no means. And again, that goes back to when you start making videos. And even to this day, if I go back and watch a few of my videos, I'm not really satisfied with them. I feel like, oh man, I really tripped up on those words or this or that. Or I didn't pronounce that right. Or man, I called, I'm clearly holding this a Benza and I called it a military or a para or whatever, you know. Stuff like that happens, and I didn't used to edit, but now I do edit all to save time. Like, I'll shoot this video all the way through, and I'm sure I'm going to edit it up just to try to not have it be a 10-minute video. Uh, again, in my experience being around YouTube a while, people don't mind 
again, I cannot speak for everybody, but people don't really care about, um, this car trying to pass over here. Anyways, people don't really care about length as much as you think they do. If it's a good video and you're doing something with the knife or you're breaking the knife down, I, I've seen people, they don't mind going into a 25 minute video. I was around YouTube when it was only 10 minutes per video, and I had a three-part video on a takedown for an SNG, and almost the third video has almost as much views as the um, the first one. Not quite, but it's, it's pretty close. It's closer than I thought it was ever going to be, so people do seek that information. Um, now it's better that we can put it all in one uh, form, you know, one... 30 minute video if you want to um, just I, I found that length really ain't an issue I think the sweet spot is right around 4 or 5 minutes though which is what I try to shoot for of course if I'm showing off uh, a few like pimp knives or something it's, I'm just, it's just going to take however long it takes I'm not going to try to rush through anything appreciate you hanging out I would make the videos if you guys did watch them so I really do appreciate it see ya